It wasn't people in the world, because people in the world was like, hey, I'm nephew, you need some food, you need what you need, you, you know, let me help you, you know, what you need. Man, I was going from church to church trying to trying to talk to people about it because I felt this church, I could tell you anything. Oh no, it wasn't so. When people got wind that I was positive, I had one lady, one lady was going church to church calling me an AIDS infested. I had one lady say, man, she sat on my toilet. Man, she used, she, she drunk out of my glasses. She didn't say, are you all right? Can I do anything for you? You know, are you all right? You know, you want me to come see you? None of that. Handshakes, it, 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 hugs turn to handshakes. People begin to act. I'm talking about it changed dramatically. And I ain't talking about, I ain't talking about two, three months. I'm talking about overnight in the body of Christ. And I'm sitting there saying, well, what am I supposed to do with all of this? What am I supposed to do with all of this? But I couldn't stop preaching. I couldn't stop singing. I had to show, I had to show up for this stuff. But what was getting me, I was still coming home. Dealing with depression. It got to a point to where my son, he joined the game because I was out to lunch. Wasn't paying no attention to him no more. It was a little bit of artificial game, but you know. I came home with it with his eye <laughs> cut all up and you know saying me to my treetop pie roof and all kinds of stuff. I was designing I mean they had they had awesome, awesome pullovers because I was doing the artwork with the whole crew on the back. They didn't even know. I was a mama of the game, didn't even know. Out to lunch. For real. And God began I and and, and one day I went to the doctor and I was telling the doctor, I was just talking to the doctor, and the doctor said, You are suffering from depression. And I said, Depression? I said, uh, I don't get depressed, I'm saved. Mm. Yeah, I'm not how we do it. Mm -hmm. I'm saved, I'm delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, glory be to God, you know. She said, Well, well, what are you doing besides preaching? What are you doing with you? And I couldn't tell her nothing but sleeping. Mm. She said, because I draw and all kinds of other stuff. She said, what about your personal desire? Do you do any of that? I say, uh-uh. I don't feel like it. But us as people of God, we always say, well, depression ain't real. You just need the Lord. That is true. But what, is, what, what do you do when you've lost your way? Yeah. What do you do when you've lost your way? What do you do when you are feeling something? You can't explain it to a child of God because a child of God is just in as in denial as you are. So I said, all right. So one night I was praying, and then I get ready to go through this divorce. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Because one of his girlfriends called my house. I had it. That was it. Called me and said, can I speak to him? And then I say, sure, you can talk to him. <laughs> Who is this? Who is this? Well, he told me he was living with his mom, with his uh, sister and her four children. I said, well, hold on just a minute. Gave him the phone. It's your girlfriend. The next day, the Lord directed me on how to get out of that. Amen. Amen. Still battling with depression. My mama came over one day, and I was sitting there on the couch. And, 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 and I'm telling you, the couch was so sunk in where I was sleeping at, it was ridiculous. Whole house was beautiful. And the couch just had a dent in it where I was sleeping. And she she began to, the tears began to roll down her face because she could see what was happening to me. And I believe that at that point God began to minister to her as well. Because she she was old school Christian, you know, and they don't believe in all that depression. They don't believe in all that, you know, but she was seeing her daughter go through something and she didn't know how to get her out of it. So what I did was I said, okay, all right, uh, 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 I'm going I'm to I'm work hard to get out of this thing. So I, I, God said, now make you a prayer closet. So one of my closets, I emptied it completely out. I put a Bible in there. I put some blessed oil in there. And I got in that closet and closed the door every night for about two weeks. He said, now everything you're going to do, just cry it out. I didn't pray. I didn't say nothing. I just cried for like two weeks. 
Then one day when I came out of there, I came out, I could actually see the sun shining. Oh, see, some people don't know how major it is when you can actually come out your front door and see the sun shining. When my kids laugh, I can actually hear them laugh. My God. So I went to battling with that thing. I got some fight in me after that two weeks. Then one day I get, I get over, uh, uh, God has moved me into a house. I get married. My husband passed away. Now, this is the part of where I really want to minister because a lot of times we think just because it's not there at that moment, we're done with it. Just because you are not out there fornicating or doing whatever you think you are delivered from it. I'm here to tell you, you have to be delivered. Amen. Amen. Ain't no, ain't no, well, I ain't had no problems with it today, so it ain't. No, it's there. You have to go through deliverance. Amen. Amen. And so when my husband passed away, Guess what came up on me again? Depression. And this time it hit me so hard I was doing things totally out of my character. As a woman of God and as a person. Didn't understand what I was doing all this stuff for. Depression creeped back up on me. But guess what? It, how many of you know anywhere there's a dark place in your life, the devil can come in there and dwell? Yeah, yeah. Anywhere you keep it a secret at, he can come in there and dwell. He come in there, set up shop, call a couple of his homeboys and say, hey, guess what? She got some lies and secrets over here, so let's come over here and sit down. Let's chill out and make, you know, build us a little coffee table, put our feet up, kick back, watch the football game. That's what it say. And that's what happened. So that Friday night, I was struggling, I was going through, I was struggling, and the Lord, he kept dealing with me, he kept dealing with me. And, and, and I kept trying to overlook the voice because I was like, Lord, I don't want to tell nobody I'm positive. I can't suffer not one, not now another rejection. I just can't do it. I cannot do it. Call myself this, and, and, and can we be real? Amen. I'm going to be real with you. Be real. Be real. I was in a relationship with someone. You know. In a relationship with someone. And, and the person started telling me that he was interested in me. So Pastor Jackson, I'm bold. I'm going to say, all right. You interested in me? You love me? Amen. I'm HIV positive. They never called me again. That night, I made a decision. Am I going to sink back into this depression? Yeah. Or am I going to take the stick from the devil? Huh. Come on now. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we give the devil a stick to beat us with. Yeah, come on. Yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Come on. Amen. I talked with that thing all night long. The Lord said, oh, you're going to tell it. He said, but first I got to let you know something. He said, I He said, I sent those insurance salesmen because you was out there offering salvation to other people and I wanted to save you. Amen. My God. Amen. Oh, y'all. Oh, Lord have mercy. He said, Amen. if I would not have sent them insurance salesmen, you would have never known today that you was positive and you probably would have been dead. My God, my God. Some of us as black people, we don't get tested for nothing. Whatever wrong with me, God gonna work it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When God pulled my cord, mm. there is a such thing as premature death. Yes, it is. You can die before your time. All right, that's right. Amen. Whether you believe that or not, you can die before your time. That's what the Bible says. The word of God says we uh, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. Yeah, yeah. I begin to tell, I begin to be bold with it. People that just walked up to me and said, hi, hey, I'm HIV positive. I started working now, I'm HIV positive, I'm HIV. Why? Because this is what's going on in my life. Just like somebody that got cancer. They can go to the church and tell the church and everybody rally. Mm -hmm. Come on. But God says that we are supposed, he says, beloved, let us love one another. Yeah. Everybody that love knoweth God, for he is God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Amen? Amen? So I begin to see people to this day. They know me and, and all this. Won't call Pastor Jackson. I had, when, I, when we launched Save, I had people call me and say, I don't even want to be affiliated or associated with you or nothing that you got going on because of that. 